Well, ladies, if you wear pants, you are an abomination. N not the pants are. You are an abomination against God. Men, if, you're, if your wife has pants in her closet, you should take them out, throw them in the garbage, and light them on fire. Both. You throw them in the garbage and light the garbage on fire. Just throw in a whole can of gasoline. That'll make sure that they get burned. Because they are part of the problem. They are part of the reason that this world, that there is transgenderism in the world today. It's your wife wearing pants. Okay. Um, I'm Pastor Josh Barnes. This is the show where we're unashamed to look at political, social, cultural, and theological issues from a biblical worldview. What we want to do is be biblical. That's because, because the Bible's true. Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead. There are eyewitness testimonies that we have read, that we know, we, we know for sure Jesus rose from the dead. And since Jesus rose from the dead, it means the Bible itself is actually a true supernatural book, which means we cannot be right about issues if we disagree with the Bible because the Bible's true. That makes us wrong if we disagree with it. So that's why we want to be biblical about things, because we like to be right. It's feels kind of good to be right. Also, being wrong leads us to lots of bad things. We want to be right. So what we want to do with this issue is we want to be biblical. Biblical. If the Bible, if the, I know people are already up in arms. People uh, <laughs> who are watching this video, you've already decided. I can't believe he would say that women, you know, should, should, shouldn't, should, uh, shouldn't wear pants and others, he's saying that people, you know, whatever. What we want to do is know what's in the Bible. We want to know if it's biblical. If the Bible says that women wearing pants is an abomination, we want to know that. I mean, we, we want to know that. We, we don't want to displease God with our actions. It's not because so-and-so believes that or such-and-such -such said that or, you know, the, mo the majority of American Christians believe that it's not a sin. That's not, that's not in the equation here. What we want to know is what does the Bible say? So let's, <laughs> let's take a look at it. Let's first hear some of the... Uh, Let's hear from the uh, the three videos I came across this week, where pastors actually preached uh, from Deuteronomy twenty two five, saying that women who wear pants are an abomination to God. Now, um, here's the first one. I don't have the name of this pastor. This was posted, I guess, about a year ago on Instagram, and it just came across. Uh, I just came across it recently um, by a guy named Lecrae, who I guess is famous. I don't know. I don't really know these people. But uh, here's the video he posted. Did post the name of the pastor, so I don't know who this is. And uh, here's what he said. And lest I forget, so <clears throat> a Christian lady wearing pants, is it a sin? Yeah. A lot of ignorance today. She is sinning against God's plan for civilization. And she is not a part of the solution. She is a part of the problem. And a lot of Christian ladies are part of the problem unknowingly. Now you're sitting in a church like this and you're thinking, you're saying, oh my goodness, the Bible says the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man and the man shall not put on a woman's garment and for all that do such are abomination unto the Lord. Like, oh my goodness, does this mean that, that I am committing sin against God if, if, if I, you know, if, if you are a woman and you say you, you put on a pair of pants, is that, is that what that's saying? If, it, if, if that is what it's saying, then as a genuine Christian should be concerned. But we got to ask ourselves, is that what it's saying? He's saying that you're actually contributing to the problem. You're part of the transgender issue, I think. I think that's what he's saying. It seems to be clear what he's saying. Um, because you are cross-dressing. You're like a drag like a drag queen. You're kind of encouraging. What's wrong with drag queens? They're just dressing in dresses like women who wear pants, right? That's that's his argument. We're going to we're going to examine it. Don't get too upset. We're going to we're going to let the Bible clarify this issue. Um but let's listen to another guy. This one, I do know the name of this guy. This is uh uh this is Duncan Urbanic. Uh, the person who posted this, by the way, seems to be very anti-Christian. He says this is a Christian hate preacher. I don't think this is a Christian hate preacher. This is a Christian who's preaching, I think, false things, but I don't think he's a hate preacher. I think he's doing it for the right reasons. I think he believes these things to be true and is genuinely wanting to call people to follow and, and honor God with their lives. But 
whether he's a hate preacher or not doesn't I don't think he is, but that's that's not part of the equation. What he's saying about the Bible seems to be obvious, obviously false. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. People want to get so riled up. Yeah, fags are abomination. God hates them. Well, didn't it just say if you're a cross-dresser, you're an abomination too? Now, obviously, it's not as bad as being a faggot, but you're, it's, God is still very upset with your sin. Now, what should we do about that, knowing that as Christians? If you're a woman and you own any pants, throw them away. Light them on fire. If you're a man and your wife has pants, throw them away. And if she yells at you, so be it. Throw them away. That's a good fight to get in. Because I'm not going to let my wife go outside wearing pants. This is not going to happen. I don't want her to be ever publicly seen being in public wearing pants. You know, if, if I was caught wearing a dress and that was online, I would do everything in my power to get rid of that picture. Like, man, I gotta find the owner of it, I gotta persuade him, I gotta pay him off. I'm like, man, please delete that picture. But you know what, there's never, there is no pictures of me wearing a dress. Because <laughs> I'm never gonna put one on. I don't own any and I don't want to wear any. And women should have that same, same standard. I don't own any pants, I'm never gonna wear pants. And I'm going to try to get rid of any evidence if I used to wear pants. And clothing in America is so cheap, there's really not an excuse for changing out bad clothing. And if it is, you know. Uh, so <laughs> there's no excuse. There's no excuse. So cheap. Um, you can go buy new clothing. Uh, that's, well, here, that's not the issue. The, the question is not whether or not it's possible to burn pants. <laughs> the question is not whether or not it's possible for, for women to always wear a skirt. The question is whether or not it's biblical, it's a biblical re requirement that they have to, and that it's a sin for them not to. That's the question. And I think um, this is obviously, this is not really getting into his argument for why, because it's posted by friendly atheist. Uh, who believes he's a hate preacher. Now, sure, he's using words that probably aren't very sensitive uh, to, to discuss the sin of homosexuality. Um, so he's not being very careful, I don't think, with his words, but that's that's besides the point. The question is, do, is he correct? If so, if it is a sin, it's not a terrible reaction to go take those uh, clothes that are sinful and throw them in the fire, burn, burn them up, you throw them in the trash and set them on fire. But um, I don't think so. Here's here's a video by um, I don't again I don't know the original preacher here, but it was posted by Red Pen Lo Logic with Mr. B, and he responded to it. We're we're not going to listen to all of his response because I'm going to do a better job responding to, to this issue. I'm just kidding to this issue. But um, but we will we'll listen to the preacher here, um, who's going to use the same argument, and then then we'll get into some some answers. Here we go. Just so you know, this is this is serious. Like this. Preachers do preach this. This is what they say. Here we go. Deuteronomy 22, verse number 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination to the Lord thy God. It doesn't say the clothes are the abomination. It says the person is the abomination. It doesn't say the clothes are the abomination. It says the person is, are you saying that my wife is an abomination when she wears pants and jeans? Yes, that's correct. She is an abomination. That's correct. Because if I wore a dress or a skirt, I would be an abomination to God. And any woman that wears pants, jeans, or cutoffs, or whatever they are, I don't care. I don't care if you've ever never heard this before or not. I don't care if you change your opinion on this. I don't care if your wife changed your opinion, your daughters changed their opinion, your granddaughters changed their opinion. I don't care if Pastor So and So changed their opinion. It don't matter to me. God said they're an abomination. But did he though? All right. So let's look at the verse. Let's look at the verse here. And I'm, I know, uh, Red, Red, Mr. B there, he's getting out his pen, which means it's his turn to talk. And I just paused him. Um, so <laughs> if you want to watch it, go check out Red Pen Logic with Mr. B. Awesome, awesome, awesome response videos that he does. Uh, I, I don't know that I've ever disagreed with anything. <laughs> Maybe I'm sure there is. I just haven't seen whatever I disagree with him about. So he's a great guy. Um, great, great responses. Um, 
So go check that out. You can find him on Facebook and on, on YouTube, uh, probably on Twitter too. I'm sure he's on Twitter. I don't do a lot of Twitter, but anyway, so let's look at the verses. I'm going to pull up a verse here on this, on your screen. It's going to be Deut- the one that they're, they're talking about, Deuteronomy 22.5. Deuteronomy 22.5. Here's what the verse states. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, you'll notice right off the bat that what the Bible does not say here is the word pants. The word pants is not in here, neither is any any word that, you know, could be translated pants, right? Like, there's nothing here that is like an ancient word for pants. That's That's not in this text. It says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now, that's an interesting way to put this. Now, let's let's consider the context for a second, because you can't understand a verse without its context. Let's understand the context of this verse. This is in Deuteronomy. This is a law to in the Old Testament to the nation of Israel. It's not just a law. It's a law that has the the connection with the with the phrase abomination, which means it's a serious law. Like this, this is just a principle that that is always a problem, like an abomination. Like this principle is so serious to God. It's not just. It's not like um, you know, nation of Israel. Uh, you shall drive on the right side of the road. Uh, you know, it's not. That's not the type of law that we're given. Get given here. There are those types of laws. You know, there are laws in in the Old Testament where, uh, to Israel where um, every Jewish soldier was to carry a little shovel with him, so that way, as he was marching around, uh, when he relieved himself, uh, he could turn around and shovel and cover it with the dirt. Okay, so that's not, it was not an abomination for a Jewish soldier to not carry a shovel. That was not an abomination. This is an abomination, which shows this is, this is like a universal thing that people need to, to do, right? So we'll give that. I'll, I'll grant that, right? This is, that's fine. Uh, we're not trying to say that this is the word abomination. It was misplaced here. When we see the word abomination concerning homosexuality, Paul reiterates that over and over again in the New Testament to show, yeah, that's an abomination to God. It still is, always has been, always will be. God doesn't change, right, on those things. So that's there, right? Whatever this is, it's speaking about is to 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 deny it is an abomination to God. Now let's let's see what it says. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now, we want to say that that's pants, or at least these pastors do, right? It's it's pants. Well, okay, we got that. that that's not what it says. It says what pertains unto a man, which really just means, very simply, that which men wear in, in your culture. Now, what was it that men wore at this time? You say, well, they, they all wore robes, didn't they? They did. They did. The only, th- the only thing really different about a man's robes back in these times was that a man would have um, a belt around his robe. And the belt would uh, usually have something hanging down from it that he could, you know, from one side and he could reach under and, and sort of loop it under and tuck it into the belt on the front. You know, there'd be hanging a, a rope hanging down the back of the belt that he could ro- ro- loop up underneath his legs and tie into the front of the belt. And that would turn his his robe into more like uh, really, really baggy shorts. So that way he could do manual labor type stuff with it. So the 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 prohibition here was that women weren't to wear wear robes that could be made into really baggy shorts. Um, all right, so these pastors, if you ask them what a what a woman, what what should a woman do if she's riding a horse? What about if she's uh, riding a bike? You know, what if she's uh, you know doing something where she she literally would be immodest? It wouldn't be right, really, for her to be wearing a skirt. What if she's up on a ladder painting something? You know, she 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 really be wearing a skirt. I mean, that doesn't seem very modest. Uh, the pastor will say, well, she should wear 
usually they'll say culottes or, or baggy shorts. Well, this prohibition here actually is a prohibition against robes that can be made into baggy shorts. So <laughs> you got a problem here making this a prohibition that that was for their culture that is a direct one-to-one -one translation to our culture even though we have a different culture but yet that's not what the prohibition says either it doesn't say women shall not wear baggy shorts it doesn't say women shall not wear girdles you know a, a belt that that can be girded up so that they could have you know they can have more motion with baggy shorts on you know that's not what it says it could have said that it God could have said that if that's what he wanted to express he could have said that he did not say that so we so we then have to assume that he did not mean to express what he did not say he meant to express that women should not wear that which men are 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 that that which pertains to a man meaning it's a man's garment it's made for men women should not cross dress that's obviously what it means. It, it says it. It says women don't wear things that men are supposed to be wearing. And men don't wear things that women wear because it's cross-dressing. So then we're not talking about specifics, whether, um, whether a certain style of clothing is wrong or right here. What we're talking about is that if in your culture it is it is um, acceptable for a man to wear this but not a woman and for a woman to wear this but not a man, then keep those gender boundaries between those two things. So then we just have to, now that we know what it means, we just have to ask ourselves, what's going on in our culture? Well, there may have been a time in American culture, there may have been a time in American culture where it was, it was women never wore pants. It was unacceptable for women to wear pants. That there, there, there was a time in our culture when it, when that was probably, probably about a hundred years ago or so, when that was um, really not, it wasn't feminine to wear pants, and it certainly has hasn't been in a very long time masculine to wear, wear a dress. But in uh, in Scottish culture, it it's different. It is considered masculine for a man to wear a kilt. Now in my culture, it's not. You're not going to catch me wearing a kilt. Why? Because that's not my culture. And it, the way I, I was raised, the way that I view that, that is feminine. But I acknowledge for a Scot Scottish man to wear a kilt, go for it, man. Absolutely. Because of your culture, that's not considered feminine. What God is saying is an abomination to him is for you to, for, for cross-dressing, drag queens. This is a verse that very clearly states that drag queens, those who purposefully try to, men who purposefully try to make a mockery of women and try to dress the opposite to, to present themselves as women, that is a sin. Women who purposefully try to present themselves as men with their dress, that is sin. But in our culture today, Whatever it was 100 years ago, today we are not living in a culture where it is masculine to wear pants. It's just not. Now there are certain, maybe there are certain pants that are feminine. Um, you know, I would probably, personally, I, pro I probably think that you might even be able to qualify like skinny jeans in, in like a feminine pants category. And maybe men shouldn't wear those because it, it blurs the lines. But what you're supposed to do is dress masculine as a man, and women are to dress feminine. In our culture, feminine does not exclude pants. Maybe it did at one time in, the, in history. It certainly did, but it doesn't today. That's not the culture we live in right now. So what we're doing is honoring this principle. At whatever, whatever point the culture changed, it changed. It is no longer, uh, we, we, we don't need to stick to the standards of 100 years ago. What we need to do is stick to the principles of the Bible, which is to wear things that are in your lane, right? It, it's not, you know, the lanes change, right? The culture changes. Uh, here's a good example of this, all right? I'm going to give you another really good example of this, if, if you will. Um, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> this is Paul trying to 
uh, explain the exact same con concept. First Corinthians chapter 11, um, he says, now I praise you, uh, let's, let me just skip down uh, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So he's giving an order here. He's saying that there's a natural created order. God wants men to lead. That, that's a responsibility that's given to men. Um, and, uh, and so men and women are to fulfill their gender roles. Um, verse 5, But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovereth, uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaved. There's a guy who's done some really interesting um, study into this. Uh, his name is Mike Winger. You can find him on YouTube. And he did. he's done a really extensive study on this passage. And um, I think his research is really solid. Um, but at any rate, in the, in the time when Paul is writing um, in the Roman Empire, it was, it was acceptable, it, it was expected that when one went to worship, whether it was in any kind of setting, uh, worshiping a pagan god or worshiping the true god, in any type of setting, a worship setting, women covered their heads. They put a head covering on them, and men did not. That was accepted um, in their society. And so Paul is saying, since that's accepted in your society, women, you should pray or you prophesy anything in a worship setting, you should cover your head because that is the accepted norm in your culture. For if the woman be not cov covered, let her be shorn. But if, if it be a shame for a woman to, sh to be shorn or shaven, let her cover her head. For a man indeed ought to cover ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought also the woman to have power on her head, because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man. For as the woman is of the man, so even is the man by the woman, but all things are of God. Notice he's saying, you, you guys need each other. Like, no man would exist if it wasn't for women. <laughs> like, right, you have a mother, you have, right? Women are an essential part of society. Men are an essential part of society, but they have their own jobs. They have their own roles to fulfill. And so he's saying, in that way, do this. And then he says, does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it's a shame to him. It's unnatural for men to be able to, to grow their hair the way women do. Naturally, men have male pattern baldness. This this just happens very commonly in men. You can see it in my own hair. Um, but if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom. The point is what, what he's saying here is very, seems to be very obvious. It's guys, stick in your lanes. Men dress like men, women dress like women, and when you go to go to the house of God, when you're going to worship God, you should worship God like a woman would normally worship in your culture. And by the way, in our society in America, this isn't the case. We don't, women don't wear head coverings anymore. It just doesn't happen, um, rarely. But in Britain, they've preserved this tradition. In, in England, it is tradition for them to, to wear, women to wear head coverings in church, and if you are a guy, you walk into church with a with a baseball hat or something like that, it's considered irreverent and crossing the line. You are dressing like a woman. Now, we don't think that way in America because, again, about 100 years ago or so, we just sort of, our culture changed. Our culture shifted. Now, when that culture was shifting, I think it probably was wrong for women to go to church without head, head coverings 100 years ago because they were part of this culture shift that, that blurred gender roles. That's not the way our culture exists anymore, right? It wasn't required in the Old Testament that women wear head coverings. Why? Why not? Because it wasn't part of the culture in the Old Testament. The point was not that women always have to wear head coverings. The point is that women should dress like women dress in their culture, and men should dress like men dress in their culture, and they sh men should not dress like women in their culture, um, and women should not dress like men. That's the point. So you look, these are, these are requirements of God that we do not allow men to dress like women dress in our culture. And women should not dress like men dress in our culture. 
So then we look at the culture. We say, what is, what is normal for a man to wear? What is masculine for a man to wear? Men wear that. Women, you are not to wear that. What is normal for a woman to wear in our culture? Women, you wear that. And men, you don't wear that. So it is normal in our culture for women to wear pants. Therefore, th this is not an issue. We're not going to go beat people over the head and tell them that they're an abomination to God because they're wearing pants. They should be modest, right? They shouldn't be revealing or, or, or anything like that. They shouldn't be trying to um, allure um, sexual um, act, um, attraction or something like that. That shouldn't be that shouldn't be the goal um, with a Christian woman. But but uh, whether or not they what what they're wearing is called pants or not, that that doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, and we've shown that not because I, that's the way I feel, but I've shown that now from the scriptures. And that's the important thing that we have built and based what we believe on what the Bible actually says. Because otherwise, all other ground, as the song says, is sinking sand. Uh, we stand on Christ and on his word and on the Bible, and that's it. That's the only thing we, we put our confidence in. And that's, that's important. That's very important. So to recap, <laughs> um, no, you do not have to, as a Christian lady, you do not have to take your pants, throw them in the trash. Now, I think you should, you know, I think you should, if you come to the conclusion, hey, I, I want to just dress in, in dresses and skirts and all that. I want to be very, like ultra feminine. Uh, I think that's more feminine. And I, I, if that's the, the conclusion you come to, go for it. Don't, please don't let me stand in your way. Oh my goodness. Run in that direction if that's, uh, if that's the conclusion you come to. But uh, don't, please don't try to preach that the Bible says that a woman who comes to a different conclusion on that matter is an abomination to God. Because that's not what the Bible says. The Bible does not say that. The Bible says that you're an abomination to God if you're specifically going and choosing clothes that are in your society designed for men and wearing those in order to look like a man. That deals with the transgender issue at its very heart. Not in its outside, you know, um, um, the, the, these outside issues that don't actually deal with the issue. God, in his law, went straight to the heart of the issue and dealt with that which pertaineth unto a man. That which, that which is made for men, that which is made for women, should stay in that category. And that's all I got got for today, guys. Thanks for joining us on Point of View. Please don't be mad at me if you disagree. <laughs> and uh, and, and let's, just, let's just let the Bible make us angry. <laughs> and, not, and not the guy who preached the Bible. Um, we'll see you next time right here on Point of View.